All right, so we're going to do a, a couple more problems with our phase change diagrams here. And this is the diagram I'll be using, and these are the questions I'll be answering. So if you want to pause the video and jot those down, or if you're in my class, you have these questions. So the first question there says, is this phase diagram for water? How can you tell? And we can say for a couple different reasons why we know this isn't the phase diagram for water. First off, you might say, hey, I know the boiling point and freezing point for water. And so at one atmosphere of pressure, when I come down here, between solid and liquid, if that was water, that should be zero degrees Celsius. It's not. It's negative 59. And boiling liquid to gas, this boiling point, should be 100 degrees Celsius for water. It's not. It's negative 33. The other reason we should know this is because of this line. Okay, For most substances, the divider line, the boundary between solid and liquid, all those different pressure and temperature situations for when melting occurs, it's generally almost straight up and down, usually a little slightly tilted to the positive side. Water, however, will have a negatively sloped line here. And this is true for all substances where the solid form is less dense than the liquid form. And that's why though that line ends up that way. It's because of the different pressure um, situations and how pressure doesn't affect solids as much. And so, again, we can tell by the boiling point and melting point temperatures at one atmosphere, but also because of that line and whether or not it's Positive, positively or negatively sloped. Second question, what are the temperature and pressure conditions for the triple point? And again, our triple point is where all of our phases exist at one time, and that's the pink spot right here. So it's at 0.8 atmospheres and negative 59 degrees Celsius. Next question, temperature and pressure conditions for the critical point. Our critical point again, after our critical point, we get the supercritical fluid. The liquid and gaseous states blend together. And so that's way up here, our green dot, 112 atmospheres of pressure, 132 degrees Celsius. Next, we've got what's the melting point and boiling point. We looked at that already at one atmosphere. Melting will be negative. Oh, let me say that again. From solid to liquid, one atmosphere, it's really not negative 59. It's slightly higher than that. So maybe negative 58, or you could just say slightly higher than negative 59, because negative 59 was the triple point temperature. And then our boiling point again at one atmosphere is negative 33 degrees Celsius. What is the sublimation point of the substance at 0.5 atmospheres? That's when we would go directly from solid to gas. So at 0.5 atmospheres, that would be negative 78 degrees Celsius. At room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, and pressure, one atmosphere, what state is this substance? So one atmosphere, and you could see 25 would be somewhere over here, but this substance would definitely be a gaseous substance. And then we have our last question. At room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, could we liquefy this substance? And it says, see example, page 432. That's for my textbook, my student's textbook. And it has to do with where the critical point is. Our critical point here is at a way higher pressure than one atmosphere. And so because of that, we can definitely say that yes, well, the critical pressure is well above room pressure as well as the critical temperature. Our critical temperature of 132 is well above 25. So for both of those reasons, then we can definitely liquefy the substance. If a substance's critical point is below room temperature, below room pressure, then you're not going to be able to liquefy that substance just by applying pressure. You're going to have to change temperature and pressure conditions in order to get it to liquefy. All right, a couple other questions that we could look at 
dealing with our phase changes and states of matter. It says, identify the phase transition occurring in each of the following. If the water level in your aquarium is continuously falling and has no leak, then hopefully you recognize that would be vaporizing liquid to gas. More importantly, you might want to call it evaporation. Yay, school's done. Molten lava from a volcano cools and becomes obsidian rock. And so if we're going from a liquid to a solid, that is freezing. You might not think of it as freezing because it's at such a high temperature, but it is. It's becoming a solid. It was a liquid. Mothballs becoming smaller and disappearing, leaving behind no evidence that they were once there. That would be a solid going directly to the gas, sublimation. Chlorine gas passed into a cold test tube where it becomes a yellow liquid, gas to liquid, condensation, or you could say liquefaction, because chlorine is a gas under normal conditions. When carbon dioxide gas under pressure exits from a small opening, turning to a white snow, that's a gas turning to a solid, deposition. And candle wax becoming liquid under the heat of the candle flame, that would be melting, solid to liquid. And then one last question here. This was a, a diagram from our book. Estimate the boiling point of carbon tetrachloride if the pressure was 250 millimeters of mercury, so well below normal pressure. And if you read the graph and go to the line for carbon tetrachloride, you would say that's about 40 degrees Celsius. Hope these questions helped, and good luck on tests, quizzes, or anything else you need it for.